In this video, we are going to go over graphing exponential functions. Um, so in the previous video, we um, graphed the good deeds um, function. Okay, so we did this in the previous video where the one child, there's one person, and he goes out and helps three people, and then it grows and grows and grows and grows. But on this graph, we didn't continue it because we couldn't have negatives. So on this one over here, on example one here, um, you will notice um, that it doesn't have a real life problem. So we're going to go ahead and make this graph again, the same function. So we know that it's going to cross here at 0, 1, because that's the first person doing the good deeds. And then when we plug in a 2, it's going to be off of here. So just draw a sketch. It just says, all we want to do is we're going to see, um, we're going to do some of the observation. So you know it's going to grow and grow and grow. And then here, it's never going to cross this x-axis. So we will talk about that in a moment. But it's going to keep going and going. So sometimes people draw like a dashed line to show that it will never cross that there. Um, so if you'd like to draw that, you can. But the base, the B value here, is 3. So in this class, due to time, we're going to focus on exponentials um, for the parent function. So let's write that down. An exponential function, a function in the form f of x or y equals b to the x. So that would be the parent function. Um, so just to make sure that that's very clear, um, normally, um, for example, let's say we had y equals x squared from last chapter, right? That makes a parabola. So when we graph that, it goes through the origin and makes a parabola. And then if we go add numbers, for example, if you remember from last chapter, if we go add like a plus 4, that number there moves the graph up 4. So those are called transformations, right? So if we had y equals x minus 3 squared plus 2, something like that. So here's the parent function. And then as we go add numbers in the equation, it, it um, transforms it and moves it. So this one would move it um, to the right 3 and then up 2. So it looks something like this, right? Bad attempt at drawing a parabola there. Um, so the point is, a parent function has no other numbers. It's just the function, plain old. Okay, so that's what we're going to focus on in this class. We're not going to talk about what having any numbers in front or with the x or over here are going to do, but it's going to be, you're going to learn that in Math 150 in the next math class. It's going to be very similar to um, last chapter, what, what it does. Okay, so with that being said, um, it says that b has to be greater than 0. So this number right here, whatever we use as the base number, has to be greater than 0. Okay? And then it says that b can't be 1. So think about why that is. So if b is 1, okay, so let me put that in my graphing calculator just to show you what it does. Okay, so if we were to graph 1 to the x power, so if this number here was a 1, that's the graph. It's just a horizontal line. Because 1 to any exponent, any number, 1 to the second power is 1. 1 to the third power is 1. Just gonna, it's not going to grow and grow and grow. So that's why we've restricted that we cannot have b be 1. So it has to be greater than 0, but not 1. Okay, and then it says x has to be a real number. So we're not going to put like the square root of negative 4 in for x. So it has to be a real number, a number that we can graph on the, um, the coordinate plane here. Okay, so now instead of 3, so let's go ahead and put that in back in my graphing calculator. So here's um, y equals 3 to the x. So you can see it grows and grows. What if now we go make the base, instead of 3 we make it a 10? So do you see what it did? Let me get rid of this graph. Same shape. Okay. But it's increasing way faster. So when we graph this one here, it's going to make the same shape, but it's going to be closer to the y-axis. Because think of this as 
one person going and then helping 10 people at a time, right? It's going to grow way quicker. So that's why um, it still makes the same shape, but this one's going to be, and again, it approaches, it gets closer and closer to the x-axis, but it never crosses over it. Okay, so make sure when you grasp this that you don't have it crossing over the x-axis. So when the base is 10, it's growing quicker compared to this one. Okay, so now let's go make the base small. Now it's 3 tenths. Okay, so here's the first one when it was a 3. Now if we go make it 0 0.3, look at what happens. Now it's going to go the other way. It flips. So it reflects over the y-axis. So when the base is small, like 3 tenths, instead, notice it still goes through here at 0, 1, because anything to the 0 power is 1. So it has that x or y-intercept in common. But now, let me get rid of that one, it's going to look like this. Okay. So here, it's growing, because we read a graph from the left to the right side, so it's growing, it's going upward. But now, from the left to the right, it's going down. So now it is decreasing really, really, really quickly. So it's de decreasing quickly. Now, if we go make the, um, the base point 0.1, let's see what happens. So it still goes in that same direction, but now it's decreasing even quicker here. So now it's going to go like this. And again, it's never crossing the x-axis. Okay. All right. So that same kind of curved shape is occurring. It's not crossing the x-axis. So let's write down some observations here. So when the base is greater than 1, so example number 1 and 2. So if you look at example 1 and 2, what they have in common is their exponential growth. So we read a graph always from the left to the right side. So from the left to the right side, it is growing. So it makes something like that. So left to right. Okay. Then when the base is in between 0 and 1, so like 0.3 or 0.1, so graph number 3 and 4, it is called exponential decay. So when it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, from the left to the right, so left to right, it's going downward. We call that decay. Notice all four of those have no x-intercept. So they never cross the x-axis. No x-intercept. The graph gets very close to the x-axis, but it never actually crosses because you can never have zero as the output. So let's make sure we understand what that means. So if we were to take y equals 3 to the x. So let's go ahead and take this one here. If I wanted to find the x-intercept, we said that there is not one. Let's talk about y. So to find the x-intercept, you would leave the x in the problem, and you plug in a 0. So let's just think about this. Can I take 3 and then raise it to an exponent? Can I think of any number that I can give x that the calculator will say 0? So like 3 to the first power? No. Um, 3 to the negative first power? What if the exponent was negative? No. So I can't think of, because when it's 0, it's 1. I can't think of a single exponent that makes the problem equal 0. That's why there's no intercepts on any of these problems. Because there's no way 
to get the output to be zero with the parent function. So the parent function has no x-intercept. It will never cross the x-axis. And this is y, because it's not possible to have y be zero. There is no number that will produce zero for y. Okay? All right, so now we're going to go ahead and um, graph. So let's say we have f of x equals 4x. So without even graphing, I know by looking at this that because b is greater than 1, so 4 is greater than 1, I know it's from the left to the right, it's going to grow. So without doing any work, I know it's going to be that shape. Okay? So now to graph it, we're going to pick whatever numbers we want for x. Why any numbers? Because we said that x can be any real number. You can plug in an exponent, negative, zero, positive. Now notice I already pre-selected our exponents because I'm forcing you. I want you to use negative, zero, and positive just to make sure that we review how to do negative exponents. So we're going to go ahead and plug in to this function here, we're going to go ahead and plug in the numbers I chose. Normally, when you graph, you would get to pick the numbers you want. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and plug in negative 2. So remember, yes, your calculator, if you plug in 4 to the negative second power, it will tell you what that equals. So it equals 0 0.0625, so it's a very small number. If I change it to a fraction, it's 1 16th. So just as a review, when you do negative exponents, remember you do it just like normal. 4 squared is 16, but it moves it to the denominator. So it's um, 1 16. And then when we do 4 to the negative first power, it's going to move the 4 to the denominator. And it's going to be 1 fourth, which 1 fourth, so 4 to the negative first power, is 0.25. That's 0.25. And then 4 raised to the 0 power, that's 1. And then 4 to the first power, that's just going to be 4. And then 4 squared is going to be 16. So you can see what happens from the left to the right of the graph. As the x's get bigger, the y values are getting bigger and bitter, bigger, just as we said. This is representative of growth. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and graph this. So I'm going to start with the positive side because I like that better. 0, 1, and then 1, 4, and then 2, 16 is going to be like way up here. And then it's going to be negative 1 and 1 fourth, so about right there, and then about right there. So it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So when I connect this, I should have an arrow growing there. And then here it's going to approach zero, uh, or it's going to approach the x-axis but never cross it there. So there, that would be my graph. So if I'm asked to find the domain, remember domain is left to right. So from the left, it's going infinitely to the negatives. And then as you go to the right, it's going to keep going and going and going to the right side. So domain means what numbers can you plug in for x, and we can plug in any numbers. It matches our graph. Now the range is from the bottom to the top. So from the bottom of the graph, the graph, and remember range is the y value, so we're looking at the y-axis here. So the graph gets really, 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 really close to here, and that y value is zero here, where it crosses the x-axis. So because we just said that it can never cross the x-axis, that's why we're going to put a parenthesis here. So again, we're putting a parenthesis here because we just said that this situation can never happen, that y can never be zero, that this can never happen. So that's why we're putting the parenthesis there. And then as we go to the top, it keeps going and going and going, so positive infinity. So that would be